Hey guys, this is Chris from Almost Legit Garage. Uh, this is part two of the Boosted Avalanche Transmission build. Um, so if you're ever wondering what it takes to build a 5-600 horsepower capable 4L60E, well you're in the right spot, hopefully. Um, so this is an outline of what is going back in my transmission. Uh, so hopefully hold up that kind of power. Um, I can't be 100% sure yet. I haven't tried it, but Everything I've found, this should hopefully hold up to that kind of power. Um, so let's start with what we broke. Um, we broke the output shaft. Uh, this is just a factory one that came with everything else I bought. Um, but this is a billet 300M uh, upgrade shaft. So it's a little bit thicker in areas and it's made out of a better material. So hopefully that'll be enough to hold everything together. Uh, moving on, I broke the, or I messed up the rear planetary gears, I kind of, they got packed full of shrapnel, and then the uh, reaction area thing, um, so we got that, um, we also damaged this part on the old one, um, but I got that as well, uh, we are still reusing, or we are reusing the five pinion planet, or uh, front planetary gear. Um, it wasn't really affected by the uh, tail shaft braking or output shaft braking. Uh, so we're going to reuse that. Um, you could also just run a uh, four element or four pinion planet. Uh, they don't really have too much of a problem from everything I've read. Um, oh. So we put, or so we're putting new uh, bushings in. Uh, they're just factory replacements, nothing fancy uh, kind of things. Uh, these are Torrington bearings. Um, they came with the uh, planetary gears and the reaction shafts and that kind of stuff that I ordered. Um, eBay is a great place to get that kind of stuff. Um, pretty much a lot of these have clutch problems. Um, so you can get parts from a transmission that had clutch problems, like hard parts. And there's really nothing wrong with them. They're just a little bit dirty, which you can clean up pretty easy. Um, just make sure you check everything real close. Make sure the pinions don't wobble or anything like uh, the planets don't wobble or anything like that. Um, so moving on to upgrades. Uh, there are not any upgrades that I'm doing particularly at the moment, but uh, they were already in here. So this is a Beast Sun Shell. Uh, we had to get a new washer for it. That was the only damage to that. Um, these are a lot stronger than the factory ones and highly recommended if you're doing any kind of transmission build. Uh, moving on, we have a uh, Sonex, or Sonex, I'm not sure exactly how you pronounce it, but uh, that's a uh, pinless uh, accumulator. Here is a pinned accumulator. You can see there's a pin that rides through it. Um, the pinless is just supposed to be a little bit less failure prone because um, that pin can wear out eventually after time. Um, I'm not sure exactly what or exactly if the truck transmissions come with it or not, but it has the Corvette servo. Um, it's just this piece on the back, this piston on the back is a lot greater surface area to apply more pressure to the band, which we are running a uh, carbon band and this one's extra wide compared to the factory one. Um, so you get a little, um, you get a bit more uh, clamping surface and uh, the carbon one is very aggressive. Uh, so they also make a red one that's not as aggressive if you're not in as aggressive of a uh, horsepower range. Um, if you're basically avoiding the huge power, or you know, the big power adders like turbos or superchargers or nitrous or that kind of thing. Um, so there's that. Uh, to go with that, this is a fairly new, uh, yeah, fairly new uh, reverse drum. Uh, I put it in the last time I did the build about a year ago, so it only has like 10,000 miles on it, so it's barely worn in. Um, so that's most of the factory stuff. Oh, it also does have a 13 element uh, oil pump in there. I'll probably show that later when we're uh, building through. Um, so I got new clutches. Uh, these are just factory clutches for the most part. The only one that we're changing is the uh, 3-4 clutches. Um, so 
What we had in it before is what they call a Z-Pack. So these are single-sided friction, so it's friction on one side, steel on the other. Uh, normally they are a double-sided friction, so let me find a good example. Um, yeah, over here. So you have... Wow, I cannot find a good example. Okay. So basically you have a steel that's just steel then a friction that has friction on both sides and those sandwiched together and that's where you get your clamping force so that's what traditional clutches look like um, the z-pack is kind of a way to fit more of those in there by making them thinner but really what you're doing is only about the same work as adding an extra clutch because you have uh, 14 single sides in a standard z-pack where they normally have six double-sided clutches, uh, which therefore you have four, or there you have 12 sides. Um, so it's only a little bit of an upgrade. What we're going to is a special eight pack of the factory style clutches. These are the Borg Warner HDs. You can't really see them through the package, but they're the same material as the carbon wideband here and uh, so they have a better friction coefficient there plus instead of putting six in we're putting eight of them in which eight double-sided frictions that's roughly 16 sides of clamping force if we're going to think about it that way so better than the 14 that we have over here um, so that should hopefully hold fourth gear because I think we're getting really close to burning those up um, with the power or with the power levels we're pushing um besides that i think the only thing else that i had to change and this is again was a used part um it all came as a kit and i got it for about fifty dollars so front rear planet sprag um and another output shaft uh for about 50 bucks um there's also several kits like i said that have the uh sun shell included with it um, just make sure it's actually a beast if it says it's a beast. Um, but I say um a lot, so you know I'm going to ruin this take by that, but you're, I'm going to put it in anyway because I don't feel like retaking. But, uh, oh, also, while we're here, I'm just going to uh, rip apart one of these sprags right here which I put this one together upside down just so I'd make sure I wouldn't try to use it instead of the good one that I have but I'm gonna try to rip this thing apart one-handed yep and there's that that comes off and instantly right there is all you need to see is the brass ring around it um, that's a signal for the uh, factory style uh, single cage sprag and I'm not going to take apart my dual cage so you guys can see but really it has two of these rings instead of one and it basically these are kind of suspended in a spring um, the other one's kind of captured better um, so if you ever if you open yours up and you have this brass washer in here I highly suggest getting the dual element even on a stock rebuild um, it's just a lot a lot sturdier of a part and it's not really very much money at all and honestly guys um i've been into this transmission twice and i've done another uh front wheel drive transmission before uh, automatic transmissions are surprisingly cheap if you know what you're doing um they're not saying it's particularly difficult that you have to know what you're doing um but yeah it's not really that complicated of a process there's some special tools that you're going to need, but, um, for example, I built this for like $5 at Lowe's, and this just compresses the uh, uh, piston spring at the bottom of the uh, transmission. Uh, clutches, for example, the uh, all the factory clutches I put in this thing were only like $60 with shipping. Um, the aftermarket stock, or you know, the upgrade eight element with the uh, fancy. Mm -hmm -hmm. Where'd they go? 
yeah, with the fancy steels that you see here, which are choline steels. So basically they're coated with a, uh, you know, coated for better wear, but that all together was $80. Um, so really, building a transmission isn't really that expensive. Um, you just need to really be willing to try, you know. Um, it's not really, it's not really rocket science, but you have to make sure, you have to be particular. Um, yeah, the only really expensive part about my build is the uh, billet output shaft. This thing retails for about $350. Um, and this is one of the cheaper manufacturers of it. The uh, Sonex one is over 500. Um, but besides that, transmission stuff's fairly cheap. And uh, if you're on a mild build or end up finding yourself in the middle of something more high end like I did, uh, just give it a go. You know, it's worth the it's worth a couple hundred bucks to try and learn and that kind of stuff. Uh, but anyways, with that trying and learning, we're going to go on to video three, where we're going to start putting this thing back together. Um, it might not turn into a full rebuild just for time's sake, uh, but transmission, or sorry, transmission rebuild part three will be actually putting the transmission back together. Um, so hopefully we can get this back together and get it back in the truck and I can actually show you guys what's so awesome about the avalanche and why I really enjoy having it. Um, I know I've kind of alluded to it over the last, you know, last few seasons and that kind of thing, but I really, I wanted to make sure it was back together and it's back together properly before I showed it off because the last thing I want to do is, you know, Last thing I want to do is break it while I'm doing one of these videos or have something not be right about it. And then it's like, look at my big broken thing. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, so anyways, thank you guys for tuning in. Um, if you like this kind of content or are really more curious about how this goes back together, um, subscribe. Uh, hit the like button if you want to see more of this kind of thing. Um, comment if you have any questions. I, I read all the comments and if it's you know, a fairly legitimate question, I'll answer it. Uh, so, thank you guys for tuning in. Watch for episode three. It should be coming out shortly. Um, if you want to know more about tearing it apart, that's video one. So, you just look back um, and look at other stuff while you're there. But, thank you guys for tuning in, and until uh, next time, later.